question number one, what was your biggest highlight, highlight as chairman? Um, I, I think it's... Um, I think it, it's... Obviously, it's got to be the millennium. Um, is, is a one-stop answer, but we've mentioned quite a few of the highlights. Uh, I think, in certain ways, beat millennium. And, and we've yeah. gone through those, and, and I think... I think that's it. But I think you, you've got to say get to the millennium, even though we lost. It was a, a massive task and we got there. Promotion, of course, was, was another big one. But I suppose everybody will remember Cardiff. And my big regret about Cardiff, apart from losing, was, you know, the year we had a chance to get to Wembley, Wembley was bloody shut. Yeah, mine too, mine too. Right, question number two. And this is the other end of this. What was your lowest point as chairman? Um, I, think, I think the lowest point as chairman was probably when uh, we, we, we knew we were uh, getting relegated and, and, and I was fearful we wouldn't get back up, but we chose Danny. And that was John, Danny's expertise was, you know, to get clubs back where they wanted. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was pretty low that when we thought all that work and we ended up back at square one, as it were. Yeah. Okay, question number three. Who was your favourite pools player over the Iowa years? There's many, there's many, um, and I suppose the right answer is Mickey Barron. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> That's what he was leaning towards, wasn't it? <laughs> you got to be PC these days, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. We've mentioned some of them, but, um, you know, you, you can't forget, guys, that squad we had, the Tinklers, the Boyds, the Porters, you know, all class in their own, but part of a, a very well-oiled team. Um, but I mean, the favourite at Hartlepool is Jan over Peterson. But you know, you've got players there with longevity who, who dedicated their, their, their careers to to Hartlepool. And without joking, Mickey, you know, you're one of them. With people like you, we can't build teams around. And um, but very, very difficult guys. Um, you just you could probably name most of the team under the Chris Turner years without being biased against the other guys in the other years. But, I mean, it, it was it was a hell of a team. And it brought on good young players like Boydie and that, you know. Um, yeah, it, 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 a difficult one, but I suppose yeah. everybody pumps for Jan over. OK. Um, which goal stands out in your memory the most? Goal? Yeah. Oh. You don't have to say one of mine either. Um, I don't remember any of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Adam Boyd's. I know we've had some goal goals with Humphreys and everybody and Beardsley's and whoever, but I always recall Adam Boyd when he was in his prime, and I can't remember the game. It may have been the 8-1 Grimsby. The, chip, the chip you're talking about. No. He, oh. he, he, he looked like he'd lost it. He was heading for the, the byline, you know, the goal line. Uh, it looked like, it was, and, he, and he hooked his foot around it. And it Shrewsbury. Sort of along, huh? Shrewsbury at home. Was it? And it, yeah. and it went, it ran along the, the line in a way and ran into the goal. It was an angle that you couldn't believe. And I think it was raining heavily that night. And he hooked it round and he was sort of sliding at the same time. And it, and it goes in the net. And it was like, how the hell did that go in? <laughs> Um, and it, I always remember that that goal. And he was he was up and coming a young guy in those days. So, you know, the potential was was fantastic. Although there was a lot of good goals for some reason, I always tend to see Adam Boy hooking that ball in from a, a really difficult angle. Brilliant. Next question: Which manager did you enjoy working with the most? Um, well, all uh, most of them, all of them, whichever way you want to say, in a different way. But of course, you know. You can't beat Chris Turner because we, we, we really we didn't just have the manager, we had the friendship with Colin. It was all it was all part of the team. Uh, of course, Neil, like we said, was fantastic. Uh, you know, Danny was one of the old school managers and you know he, he really did push hard to run it how he wanted, but he, you know, he did his job, he got his promotion promoted. Um, uh, very hard to select one of them. Okay. Um was there a player that you were keen to sign but the club missed out on? So was there someone that we had lined up that we thought Jan we were going to sign? Yeah. Jan Ovi. We, we were close to getting him. And if we'd had, if we'd had more funding uh, to match what he got in Austria, we would have got him. And I think he would have turned the club around in a lot of ways. 
Yeah. Right. Two more to go. What do you miss most about being chairman of the club? Uh, well, obviously, at first it was very uh, difficult, but as the years went by, as you know, Mickey, football gets in your blood. So, you, you know, you just miss the, the people, the camaraderie, yeah. the going to the club on match days, meeting the players, the atmosphere, the ups and the downs. It really is a way of life, as you well know. That was your life. Um, it was my sort of second life. But having to give Hartley Pool up and going sort of for the last time and, you know, and then having nothing on, on Saturday, on every second Saturday afternoon. Uh, yeah, it, it, you miss it. It's similar to you, Mick. Oh, 100%. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I love doing the podcast so much because it gives you a chance to people. I, I, apart from seeing you at the Newcastle match game, I've, I've probably not seen you for such a long time. But it's been absolutely lovely to catch up here tonight and just reminisce about some of the, the times we've spent together. And it, for me, it's a real positive for I'm getting to speak to people about really happy times in my life. And, and, and I do. I miss the people in football probably more so than playing football itself. I miss <laughs> seeing people that I used to see twice a year or three times a year or maybe just once a year if you're travelling down. I miss the bus driver. I miss people in football. Yeah, I, I think for you guys, it's, 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 it's very, very difficult. And you know the old phrase is, you know, play as long as you can because it's a long time not playing. But it's very difficult for you guys, I think. I mean, it was hard for me. Uh, but I, I had a day job to go back to, you know, in yes. your lives. And I think it's very difficult, Mickey. And, and if, particularly when you've had the system that we had in those, shall we say, golden years. I mean, those are the sort of things you'll be talking about, you know, when you're in your wheelchair, so to speak. Because, and, and those players, they're just characters. They're just, you know, they all they all had their own character, didn't they? And uh, and, and yet they made the team. And, and you're part of that team. I, I, I think it's very tough to... To, to, to break away from that and I think I know from what I hear about when you guys have your reunions and you know your kick arounds together when you can get together I mean you know you, I can guarantee that it just all comes flooding back you're all back there you know back playing the game again and you know, yeah, and well, you can't I, buy that. No I arranged the, 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 the charity match that we played in last year for the Trust and for weeks after that I was the lads with Texas let me organise another game see if we can yeah and we've got a couple more lined up for this year. So we're lucky in a way that we do still contact each other. We've got a WhatsApp group where we're all in, where we're messaging each other. But it's it, it's a big part of your life. And you, and you do miss those people that you spend day after day, hour after hour with for, for years. Yeah, of course. Of course, you live in the pockets each of, each of all of you. And uh, and I think it's good, though, that you keep in touch, you know, um, because th th those are the guys who, you know, you'll still want to be talking to in years and years' time. And... And uh, if you've got nothing else in the years to come, you know you'll always look back on and have jokes about what we've just talked about tonight. I mean, look yeah. at this. Uh, Mark calls me up to do this deal out of the blue, and uh, <laughs> and, and here we are. We're, we're back. At, we're back at the football club, uh, ready for the next game. You know, so yeah. it's magic that does that. Right. Last question, Ken. Um, what would your advice be for any potential chairman? Chairman of Hartlepool. Or just chairman in, in general? Um, I think, uh, I, I, I think, well, I, and I don't know how true it is. I spoke about it before. I think you've got to bridge that gap with your manager. Uh, and I, and I, I don't know if it's, if it's a contractual thing or, a, or an attitude thing, but I think football is, is backward where you have these managers that, go round and round, keep getting the jobs, making mistakes, then they become pundits and all of a sudden they're absolutely fantastic pundits, yet they fail being a bloody manager. I don't know how they can be a good pundit and then they, they're not a good manager. And and there's still this gap, I think, between the chairman and the, and, and the manager. And you can go back to the Brian Clough story movie and, uh, you know, he, he's, 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 he's having hell with his chairman. And, uh, and, and, and when was that? That was... Derby days, probably yeah. when in the early yeah. 70s. And I still think it's there today. I still think that this gap between chairman and managers, and my advice to a chairman is try and treat the managers like employees and, and try and have the managers be on your side. And 
so they're not in fear of you or that they've always got to try and be one step ahead and get the fattest contract out of you because one day you might fire them when in reality that the manager is probably going to be the one that walks away from you because he gets a better job. I just think there's that big gap and as long as there's that big gap, then chairman will be stupid and spend money on managers and players because the manager says they've got to buy this 50 million pound player or you'll, you'll, um, you'll have a situation where man chairman will always be taken advantage of by managers. So I just think there's an issue there with chairman and managers.